Everyone and welcome to day two of Mar Dreaming. Woohoo! <laughs> um, if you're excited to be here, go ahead and let me know. Yes, I love the gifts. Good morning. Go ahead and say um, hello um, and share where you're joining us from today in the chat. Um, my name is Christina Anderson from the Circante team, and I am your moderator for this year's Demo Jam. And first off, I just wanted to give a big thank you and shout out to all of our speakers from yesterday. You all crushed it. You gave such amazing insights and best practices that the community can now um, take in and bring back to their organizations to optimize their processes, elevate their campaigns, and make their customer experiences even better. And I want to continue on that shout out train by giving a shout out and big thank you to our incredible sponsors. Yes, <laughs> I love the gifts coming in. Um, Marjorie would not be possible without you. So attendees, if you haven't already visited their virtual booths, you can do so by clicking the sponsors and resources tab up above and checking out all of the powerful solutions that are available to you and chat with someone from their team. We also wanted to give you a few reminders Remember that the Genius Bar is open all week and this includes Friday. This is your chance to get one-on-one -on -one support with a certified expert. So be sure to book your one-on-one -on -one session and pick their brain. And to do so, you can also click that Sponsors and Resources tab, go to the Genius Bar virtual booth and book your appointment there. Next, we have workshop day tomorrow, which means that there is still time to sign up. Yes, and we have 13 interactive workshops lined up for you. So if you haven't already gotten your all access workshop day pass, you can still do that. And finally, yes, these sessions are recorded and they will be available after the event. Another reminder that we are giving away swag, trailblazer hoodies and certification vouchers. So, and how you can win swag is engage in chat, Q&A, and polls. We're looking to see who is engaging the most. So be sure to um, engage as much as you can and uh, see if you can win some swag. Next, I wanted to highlight some sessions that are happening later today. So right after our demo jam today, we're gonna hear from Vandana Nayak, who is sharing how to elevate customer experiences with data AI and CRM in the AI era. Then be sure to join the afternoon keynote panel. We'll be hearing from industry leaders on how we can better align our marketing sales and customer success teams. 
And then finally, be sure to tune in for the closing keynote. We're going to hear about how to build lasting relationships across the customer life cycle. And at the closing keynote is when we're going to announce the winners of the swag. So be sure to attend that one live. All right, and without further ado, let's meet this year's Demo Jam drivers. We have Josh Klein from Stencil, Amanda Bagley from SQL.io, Jacob Engler from Qualified, Jackson Eldridge from Storylane, Richard Feist from Circante, Andrew Peace from Chili Piper, Harold Beringer from Rollworks, and Adam Bruel from Traction Complete. You'll be seeing eight different demos, and each person is going to have three minutes to show you their powerful solution. Now, here's how today is going to work. We're going to go on a journey with a marketer. And as the marketer creates and builds their campaign, they're going to be turning to each one of these powerful solutions that you'll see demoed. And then at the end, you're going to get to vote for your favorite and then we will crown our winner. So be sure as you're seeing these demos, write down little notes about your favorite parts of them. And especially then that way you can take those ideas back to your team too, right? Okay, now let's go on a journey. Our marketer is Jane, and Jane works at a company called Marsass. Jane is going to be putting on an event campaign, and her whole goal is to drive signups for that event. And then she wants to create a personalized journey to nurture registrants. And as she plans, builds, and reports on this campaign, she's going to be turning to each one of the powerful solutions that you'll see demoed. And the very first uh, solution that Jane is going to turn to is role works where she is going to set up an ad campaign targeting pre-identified prospects of key accounts. And driving today's role works demo is Harold Beringer. Harold, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Christine. I appreciate the introduction and thanks for everyone's time today. I know we just have a couple of minutes per demo, so I'll get right to it. So as Christina mentioned, um, Jane is wanting to promote this um, event and, and boost registration. So here I am in Rollworks um, and, and as, as a certified Salesforce partner, one of the first things we want to do is jump in and start to create a couple of different list types, right? The first one is basically how we tie to the Salesforce environment to pull in, for example, accounts that Jane might want to go after. So the integration allows her to pick any of the objects you see here. And we have other objects we tie to, but in most cases it would be the account object so that we can find folks at these organizations, right? Or companies that are part of buying committee she cares about, right? And so you'll see as I pick these values, these would be the fields that we could pivot off of to then dynamically sync a list into the Rollworks platform. Now keep in mind, and I'll show later in the demo, we can also target contacts as well. So from the uh, home page, we also have the ability to pull in email addresses from Salesforce to use that as another channel to help boost registration. But let's focus in on the, the account list first in terms of the upcoming event. So the first thing you'll notice is this is a, a list that we have synced over from the Salesforce environment. So it's dynamic in nature, it'll update once a day. And now what, what Jane wants to do is take action and get a campaign against these target um, accounts, what we'll do next is layer in the personas that we care about, that Jane cares about in terms of inviting. So as I click through here, this is the setup of what we call a campaign. We're gonna pick our list that we have synced from the Salesforce environment here. And then you'll notice the power of real work starts to leverage our data set on the back end in terms of our advertising heritage. So it shows the audience size, but we wanna layer in for sure folks that we care about. So you'll notice here me layering things like seniority of the individuals within these organizations that we're targeting. And then also likely, you know, some their job function as well. And so I'm just gonna pick in this case, marketing, since she works for uh, Marsas, right? Um, you can see here, there are multiple marketing titles or uh, uh, functions she can pick from. And then straight away, you'll see on the right, Rollworks will tell her, okay, now we're, now we're more spear phishing against these accounts for the unknown targeted audience, and then even gives her a budget over the next several weeks, right, to get in front of these folks. Now, the next step that I'll highlight here is how we inject the actual creatives. 
So this lives in Rollworks as well. In this case, it's an event. I'm just gonna pick you know, a couple of creatives just in the interest of time, right? We recommend a set here so that like once we learn the audience, it serves dynamically to, that, uh, to the individual and it's individualized as well. I won't go through the whole workflow just in the interest of time, but know that we also provide the metrics behind how this campaign is performing in terms of account uh, depth reach, if it's driving traffic to that landing page for registration, all the way down to the account level as well in terms of things like clicks, CPCs, et cetera. And it wouldn't, it, I'd be remiss without mentioning too, we also, with that tie back to Salesforce, pipe back that the, a lot, the key metrics at the account level in terms of impressions, clicks, et cetera. This is an example dashboard here, okay? Um, the next thing we'll look at is basically contact lists, right? So I talked about that in context of like, hey, we can also ingest email addresses. This is an example of a list we've synced over from Salesforce. Right? And in this case, we're gonna create a different type of campaign where we say, hey, we wanna get in front of these contacts, basically their email addresses. So you'd likely be using your marketing automation solution as well to get in front of these folks. But in this case, we also wanna get in front of them through contact targeting through ads. And so without filling all this out, I'm just gonna go down and show you that like, here's where we would pick our audience, right? In terms of that upcoming event. And then again, the creatives themselves would be down here as well, similar to that workflow you saw earlier. And then of course, we'd also provide the metrics behind this campaign, again, against those email addresses. Similarly, on the Salesforce side, we would also pipe back those lead contact reports in terms of, is it having an effect on those particular individuals? So that's a quick summary. I know that's a little bit over three minutes, but hopefully you got a sense of that. Um, kind of, I, I think the next thing is that we'll transition this over to, hey, once folks do make, when, when um, Jane's uh, prospects do make it to that, uh, the website or the landing page, how qualified will help in terms of um, their chatbot. Appreciate it. Yeah. Once, <laughs> yes, you are so right, Harold. Thank you so much for that demo. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Um, so yes, to Harold's point, with that ad campaign that Jane, our marketer, just set up, she is going to attract a prospect named Sue Jones, who is a VP of marketing. Sue clicks on that ad, and then she's taken to the event page that Jane has set up and is greeted by a chat experience powered by Qualified's AI conversation solution. And driving today's Qualified demo is Jacob Engler. Jacob, go ahead and take it away. Thanks so much, Christina. And I'll pick up where Harold left off. So we see Ju uh, Sue Jones, uh, SVP of marketing, being targeted with a paid ad. And like any SVP of marketing, Sue is going to do her own research. She'll click on the paid ad, might take her to a landing page. And at Qualified, we'll, we're able to try to de-anonymize these visitors, understand what channels they came from, understand who they might be. Sue right, came from that Woolworks campaign. So we can see that she is coming from a marketing background and she's qualified for her upcoming event, Marjorie Right now, Sue might not be ready for to register. She can register now, but she might not be ready. So she can get rid of this uh, offer that is powered by our AI SDR Piper. As she continues to scroll and do research, we're gonna see Piper, our AI SDR, pop in with contextual information down here, right? So, hey, I'm Piper, AI SDR at Circante. How's your visit going? And again, as I'm scrolling, as I'm browsing the website, Piper is able to bring in all the de-anonymization efforts we have, including cookies, including reverse IP, including uh, ch channels that, that Sue might've come from like a paid ad. So saw you're interested in business consulting strategy. Any questions? Yeah, actually I do have a question. Um, can you tell me the top three use cases that clients bring on Sir Conte for? And uh, Piper, the SDR is gonna go through all the different pieces of content that make up her brain. That includes the website, that includes offline information, like knowledge bases or PDFs. And you can see these top three use cases, marketing automation and personalization, streamlining customer journeys, and Salesforce implementation and migration. Piper will also uh, provide resources and try to continue the conversation. Is there any particular area you're interested in exploring further? Yeah, actually I'm interested in how much these services might cost. And Piper's gonna pick up on the intent of this conversation and interaction. Piper's gonna see, oh, you're interested in cost? Well, that means you must be maybe someone who's interested in buying our services. Therefore, I'll tell you that it really depends on the scope of the project, but if you share your email address, I can connect you with someone on the team. So Sue says, okay, 
I'll bite, fine. And she, sues her, she shares her email address. Now qualified comes with built-in enrichment. So we're able to enrich this email address and decide, is any other qualification required? Do we need to ask how many people are at your company or what's the scope of the project? Or can we just book that initial meeting right away? And it looks like Piper is saying, no more, no more discovery required. Here's that meeting, go ahead and book right away. So now Sue was offered a meeting on the site, but this is a marketer's worst nightmare is Sue decides, I actually changed my mind. I don't wanna book the meeting. That is really scary for a marketer. So as Sue goes away, we can actually see that Piper can follow up with some email. So here, if Sue comes to the website and abandons that meeting booker, Piper can decide, okay, how do I wanna to respond to this abandoned, e abandoned email or abandoned meeting, excuse me. And we can see that Piper is going to use that integration infrastructure to say, hey, are you sure you don't want to connect with our team? Here's a case study. Here's a link. And I actually set up an email that I see from Piper right here. So as Sue decides to come back to the site and click on that link, it all comes full circle. Piper is able to recognize that this is Sue. I'm able to offer an, a, a book now meeting. And I can actually see that Sue's checking out this Home Depot case study. I can see that Piper is gonna reach out with contextual information regarding the Home Depot case study. Oh, oops, sorry, I zoomed in a little bit here. Okay. And also we can change call to actions on the website. So if I wanna contact us, instead of taking us to a form, it's gonna say, hey, aren't you Sue from Digital, Real from Digital Realty? No need to fill out a form. We already know who you are. Go ahead and book a meeting right away. And that's the power of AI SDR Piper. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jacob. We greatly appreciate you sharing that demo of Qualified. So next, in order to make sure that um, prospects like Sue have a great experience as they um, come to the site and are greeted by that chatbot, then um, Jane is going to turn to a solution like Chili Piper to make sure there's a seamless routing process on the back end to make sure that Sue has the best experience. And driving today's Chili Piper demo is Andrew Peace. Andrew, take it away. Thank you for the intro, Christina. Let me get my screen up here. Um, so as uh, most people are familiar with um, the Chili Piper demo form and, and kind of concierge routing. I'm still just going to show real quick and then we'll get into the back end of how we can do routing and lead distribution and some clever things that we've built in the past year or so. Um, so we're going to submit this form um, and uh, the, we'll give it a minute to scroll here. Hopefully it's not my internet connection. The, uh, I know I only have three minutes also. The time will pop up here. So she can select uh, a time where she's free to book a meeting. She can change the time zone. I am in the New York area. Um, so it makes sense that that's pulling my time zone in here. Once she schedules the time, they're going to get booked automatically with an AE. All of this is set up on the back end to make sure that the right um, person gets in front of Sue at the right time. So now we're going to jump into the back end. This is actually what we call a distro router ra rather than concierge, which is what we were just looking at. Um, everything that you can see here can be copied into a concierge router as well and vice versa. So if you build something that you love in distro, you can easily build it in concierge, like literally by copying it over. Um, but what distro does is, is for folks who aren't necessarily ready to raise their hand yet. So say you go to an event, uh, maybe you get a badge scan or you get a lead list. Um, so they're not necessarily raising their hand and ready to talk to anyone right away. We want to still make sure that they go to the right people. Um, so we're triggering here based off of uh, a lead being created or a record being updated. This entry rule is going to make it so that only folks and, and uh, it's also incredibly easy and intuitive to use as you go through this flow. Uh, it's super easy to manage and add new steps. Um, the lead entry rule is going to be, okay, folks that are only at the Marjorie Min campaign or only from uh, any event leads that we get. We're, we have these new matching rules, which are incredibly helpful, and I'll touch on a, a couple of use cases here why. So lead to contact, say a contact already exists. This lead comes in, we want to assign it to the person who already owns the contact. Easy, that's what we have set up here. Lead to lead. I know that a lot of people in RevOps marketing ops uh, struggle with duplicates, myself included. Um, huge pain in the butt. So if leads already exist, we can map it uh, the account owner or the lead owner to that lead owner, and then we can actually merge the records right in Chili Piper. Um, so keep the existing lead, replace blank fields only. We can select different options um, that we want for uh, these categories. This lead to account matching is like my favorite thing in the platform. So say you have a target account, Sue works at Marsas. Marsas is one of uh, your rep's target accounts. 
the lead if it matches that account you can set up fuzzy matching as you want you can set up um, tiebreakers so if it's like not incredibly clear if it's you know verizon llc versus verizon incorporated you can set up those matches um, once it matches that lead to the account, we can assign the account owner um, as the lead owner. We can automatically convert the lead. This is like the coolest thing in my opinion. So lead comes in, it's tied to the target account rather than an SDR or an AE having to go and dig through those lead lists, find the right people, find who the, the, the right AE is. We can automatically convert that lead onto the account. We can do the same thing with uh, opportunity matching as well, which is super cool. Um, so. As you can see here, there's a ton that we can build out um, in this distro engine. So super pumped to, to show it here. Um, and I see Christina has jumped back on my screen. Um, so I, as you can see, there's a ton more that we can do. If anyone is interested uh, to learn more, please feel free to, to reach out to me or, or to Chili Piper. But we're super excited about um, this new distro engine that we have uh, and the capabilities that we've kind of jumped into. So thanks for letting me share. Thank you so much, Andrew. We greatly appreciate you sharing that demo of Chili Piper. Next, in order to give prospects like Sue a more hands-on preview of what uh, Jane's company can do, she is going to turn to Story Lane in order to create an interactive demo and embed it on their event page. In driving today's Story Lane demo is Jackson Eldridge. Jackson, go ahead and take it away. Awesome, thanks for the introduction, Christina. So when we last left our marketer, Jane, uh, she wants to embed an interactive product tour to her event registration page to boost conversions and also give that prospect, Sue, uh, the ability to tour the Marsas platform before registering for Marsas Live, the event um, that, we're, that we're marketing for. So here's this landing page. We have the, the, the classic countdown. We have register for Marsas Live, but we're missing that interactive product tour. Let's go ahead and build it out with Storylane. So I'm going to bump over to Mercury's uh, banking platform. I know this is not the Marsas Live platform, but it'll be our example platform. Let's open up the Storylane plugin create new demo, and I'm going to start capturing with screenshots. So after this countdown, the Storylane plugin is tracking all of our clicks, creating screenshots, taking a video file, and stitching the demo flow together. So I'm going to go through one of my top workflows as normal. Okay, and up in the top right, we can see the number five on the plugin. We've captured our screens. I'm gonna finish capturing. The first thing we see is a preview with a mock title card inserted and the Storylane plugin is automatically sequencing the demo flow, placing hotspots on, on all the clicks and stitching together our demo. Now from here, I'm gonna go into the editor and start adjusting our content. So we see our flow builder here on the right-hand side where the plugin automatically step it, uh, sequence steps number one through eight. And then here on step number one, I'll say, welcome, to Marsas. Then on step number two, we have our first hotspot clicking on a feature. I'm going to enable our backdrop and spotlight feature to put a vignette around the feature of interest. I'll set my drop shadow. I'll go to add my messaging. I'll say home page. From here, I can use AI Assist to help me generate content faster. So from that short prompt, I can write a larger guide, revise it down. Also have the option for adding voiceover and video. So on this particular step, I'm gonna to go to the add voiceover button. I can record the audio in the application using my own microphone, or I can generate it using AI in a number of different languages and accents. So I'm gonna generate that voiceover, save it to the step. One last touch, I'm gonna to add a track and zoom. So it has a little cinematic pull in, pull out. And then on step number three, let me drag this over to a different feature. I'm gonna swap out our guide tab for a hotspot to a tooltip. I'll set my drop shadow. I'll add our messaging. I'll say money graph. And then I'm going to add a talking head explainer to this step. So I'm going to say add video. Of course, it takes the camera. Let me switch over. There we are. So after a short countdown, let me uh, add my video. Hey, here's more about feature XYZ, blah, blah, blah. So it's going to look and feel like a Loom video, but instead of passively watching it, your demo viewer is going to be driving the action in the demo. Okay, perfect. So we've built out that demo flow. One last uh, detail to add before we go and publish it. Let's say hypothetically that um, you know Jane works with, with a very enterprise uh, product and it takes a lot of engineering resources for the demo screens and interfaces to look ready. She can also capture demo screens using HTML and then be able to dynamically edit them on the back end. So I'm jumping back into Mercury. I'm going to capture a screen using the HTML editor this time. Takes about two to three seconds while the plugin is crawling the screen. The screen goes opaque. And then once it's done, we're going to see the number one over here. I'll finish capturing. And now here in the demo builder, we have two modes to work in the edit mode and the guide mode. So once that renders in, 
Now I can jump into these, edit them dynamically, and then I'm ready to embed this. So let me stop sharing. I need to get the audio up here and then I'll reshare. Here we are. And now here is our embedded demo ready to view. A representation of product features and benefits with interactive elements for users. to. Here's more about feature XYZ, blah, blah, blah. And that's the interactive product tour that we're providing to Jane. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jackson. We greatly appreciate you sharing that demo of Story Lane. Next, along our journey with Jane, she's thinking about, OK, after my prospects sign up for my event, I want to make sure that I set up a uh, personalized uh, communication journey through a series of emails in order to nurture them, keep them informed, keep keep them informed, and get them excited about attending our event. And to do that, Jane is going to turn to Stencil. And driving our Stencil demo for today is Josh Klein. Josh, go ahead and take it away. Hey, thanks for the introduction, Christina. I'm going to show how Jane can use our collaborative email and landing page creation platform that's going to help her greatly reduce the time and struggle it takes to create an email from an initial idea or request to being deployed from an email or marketing automation platform. Now, after receiving the signups, Jane's going to use the email builder side of Stencil to create emails using pre-built and render tested modules that have brand guidelines built in. Once an email is created, Jane can kick off a review and approvals process right within Stencil. Finished emails are then pushed from Stencil to an email deployment solution. Jane can add modules to her canvas here to create the layout of her email. And then she can go through and add her copy, images, and links. As mentioned, these modules have brand guidelines locked in, where all the emails created are going to meet those standards, render as expected, and include all the necessary components to be accessible to all recipients and remain compliant. Here's what I mean. This logo can't really be removed or changed. Jane can choose between left center alignment and a couple of on-brand background colors. This title, even without helper text, reminds Jane that of a, there's a line limit in place. And this CTA is going to throw an error message when going beyond the assigned character count limit. This title can only be styled using two different font sizes and a couple of on-brand font color choices. Whereas this text has more styling options that I can use, including dropping in personalization tags from Marketing Cloud, Account Engagement, or Pardot. Jane can click in the margin to toggle on or off different elements that she may or may not need. And this two column module can take on a completely different look and feel just by toggling off a couple different elements. Additionally, Jane can use Stencil to create dynamic content to target registered and unregistered email recipients with different content within the same email without needing to know any AMP script. She can simply enable dynamic content for a module and choose from a preset list of dropdowns that have been created for her by an admin. So I can choose between not registered and registered. That's going to drop in the AMP script. And all Jane needs to do is select the segment name she wants and input the creative for each segment, all within the brand guidelines for Stencil. This could even mean showing content to one segment and hiding it for another, like we see here. These flexible modules and permissions enable teams and people like Jane to work faster in many ways. For some, it's by enabling more distributed work where requesters can actually start building emails from the start or for others by empowering central teams to work faster with less room for error and less back and forth. Now that our email is created, Jane can kick off the review process to notify team members that it's their turn to review and provide feedback. So you can see it's going to go through different feedback processes here. And through Stencil's integrations with messaging and workflow applications, reviewers can be notified about proof activity where they are already working. They'll be directed to collaborate centrally within st this stencil proof where they can leave comments, preview different views, return to past versions, and ultimately approve. Once an email has been completely approved, Jane can push it automatically to Marketing Cloud, Account Engagement, or Pardot. And now that process that previously took Jane weeks has been reduced to days. We'd love to hear from you if you'd like to learn more about how people like Jane can save time and enhance their creation process with stencil. Thanks. Thank you so much, Josh. We really appreciate you sharing that demo 
of stencil. All right, and continuing on in our journey with Jane. Jane's event campaign hinges on good data. So to make sure that she has everything set up in her CRM correctly to accurately link every prospect and customer interaction experience in one place, she turns to Traction Complete. And driving today's Traction Complete demo is Adam Burrell. Adam, I'll let you take it away. Thank you for the introduction there, Christina. So as, Jane, as uh, Christina mentioned, Jane's campaign success uh, depends on having good data in Salesforce. And to achieve this, Jane uses Traction Complete to cleanse, connect, and orchestrate her processes around her CRM data. So firstly, Jane uses Traction Complete to identify and manage duplicates across her objects in Salesforce. That includes the leads and the contacts that are going to make up her campaign audience. She's able to easily identify the records that she needs to review, she can define duplicates in different ways, so to be able to look at different email addresses like alternative emails and personal emails, looking at things like telephone numbers and fuzzy matching to identify duplicates in different ways and manage them in the appropriate way to make sure that as part of the campaign, she's not messaging the same person multiple times and kind of creating a confusing message to our audience. But as part of that, not just being able to identify the records to merge, she also needs to be able to determine the merge behavior. What is the best surviving or winning record? Is it the record uh, that's the oldest record? Is it the one with the most recent activity or the one with the most activity? And then even to set rules around field by field data retention to prioritize the most important data. When we think of things like preferences and opt-outs and do not calls, that's really critical for things like CASA compliance and GDPR. And so we need to be able to retain that most important data. Or if we think of things like part up comments, we don't want to lose any of those values. So Jane wants to be able to concatenate those values on that surviving record so she has that best of both worlds so that we did, that she has the surviving record that she wants, but we don't lose any of that important data as part of this cleanup process. And she's able to manage all that within Salesforce to execute that merge and clean up that data so that she has a clean data set. And then she can use Traction Complete to orchestrate automation around when new data comes into Salesforce to match those existing leads to existing accounts and contacts and other leads in Salesforce, to do things like auto merge and auto conversion, to match leads to existing accounts, to do things like account based assignment, or even assign leads based off of round robin to make sure that in all circumstances, lead get assigned to the most appropriate user in Salesforce to increase the chances of conversion across their campaigns. And that includes things like form fields when people are filling out part up forms and those new leads come into Salesforce being able to make sure that we understand our relationship with these leads. How do they relate to existing accounts for things like ABM? What is our existing relationship and how can we assign them to the right account owner? Are they from customer accounts or target accounts so we can make sure that we can build them into the right audiences and send the right message? And then also understand our relationship at the hierarchical level. Traction Complete also automatically builds out and maintains the account hierarchy and sales of course for Jane and team so they can understand leads at the hierarchical level and do things like enterprise ABM. And so just to kind of recap in today's demo, we've seen how Traction Complete helps Jane to easily connect, cleanse, and orchestrate data processes across the customer journey to really help optimize their campaign performance. And thank you everybody for your time. Thank you so much for that great demo, Adam, of uh, We really appreciate it. And now continuing on in Jane's journey, now is when she actually gets to build the virtual events for our virtual event campaign. And to do so, she is going to turn it to SQL. And through that, she's going to be able to see all attendee engagement and be able to create a truly interactive experience. And driving today's SQL demo is Amanda Bagley. Amanda, I'll let you take it away. Hello, everyone. My name is Jane, and today is the day of the MarsAS webinar. And at MarsAS, we use SQL IO because it enables us to host this webinar directly on our own website. This means our audience is fully immersed within our brand's ecosystem. They can access additional content, and we're keeping them on that one part of the internet we've spent the most time and money driving them to our own website. Since 
I'm the host today, I'm going to head over to the same link as our registrants and our attendees, and I'm going to just put in my join code. And voila, I have entered the virtual backstage. So prior to the event, I set everything up. I created some polls, added some media. And as you can see, the chat is already super engaged. So let's go live. Through, oops, here we go. Throughout the event, I can bring on different pieces of content. For example, a slide deck. And the great part about SQL.io is anyone in the backstage can control the content that's on stage. So as a host or presenter, I can actually focus on the content versus all the confusing of navigating a, a deck or something like that. I also have full control over the chat. If, for example, a certain question is getting a lot of attention or a lot of upvotes, I can actually bring it on stage. For example, here is a great question from John. One of the things that my sales team loves about SQL IO is I can actually bring a call to action directly on stage while we're live during the webinar. So this means we can actually push people down the funnel in real time. Now that the event is over, it'll instantly become available on demand. So anyone who missed the event or wants to watch it later can easily access the content. Now we're gonna switch over to the back end of SQL IO. Uh, this uh, is where I can access a complete overview of the performance of my webinar and video program. I can also drill down into specific events and uh, with SQL IO's powerful integrations, I can push this engagement data directly into our CRM, enabling my sales reps to follow up with contextually relevant content that resonates with each attendee. With SQLIO's detailed audience insights, I'm not just running a webinar, I'm a data-driven marketer running webinars that go beyond lead capture and serve as a core component of our demand generation program. And I'm not done yet. Um, I can head over to our media hub where with SQL AI, it enables me to automatically generate video clips, social media snippets, and other multimedia content. This is a game changer for repurposing our webinar content and distributing it across different channels. That's all for me. Let's head over to Sir Conte for some automation. Thank you so much, Amanda. We really appreciate that great demo of SQL. And now, finally, to make sure that all of the reporting is set up for Jane, so then that way she can capture all the campaign engagement and also see the full impact of her efforts, she is going to partner with Circante in order to build all of that out. And driving today's Circante demo is Richard Feist. Rich, I'll let you take it away. Hi there. Thanks for the lovely intro, everyone. Um, okay, so what we've got is everything that's working at the moment across all these different platforms. We're looking at a way of being able to accurately track attribute and action all of these different uh, uh, paths and channels. Just an example here, we can see, as an example, I've got some UTM values on our URL string that someone's come in on. Now, we are able to capture those on a form and also just from the visit itself. So you can see here, I've got some fields. They would be hidden on an actual form. I'm showing them here so that you're, it's easy for you to see. By submitting that, we're going to see that information come through onto a prospect. And here, one earlier, you can see I've also got that visit activity tracked. So when we're looking at our prospects, we can see that information is being pulled in and being actually attributed onto our individuals there. Now, that's really important because we want to build up our touch points and understand exactly what channels, what methods, and how our individuals are getting to us. So, once we've got that information being captured, whether it's on a visit inside account engagement or whether it's by a form being completed, there are a number of different layers and methods we can do for that. 
we're going to start to be able to build up a background and picture. Now, we've got that information. The next step is through automation. We have two main types of automation we use for this. One is flows that are built out to see an example here is we've got any UTM campaign values are being matched to campaigns based upon that. And we are then adding people to our Salesforce campaigns based on the information we can gather from all our different channels, all of that UTM information that we're having driven in. The other method we've got is we've built some proprietary code that we use and apply to allow us to be able to see and take that information from the visit here. Even if someone doesn't complete a form, we're able to do the same thing, add people to campaigns and capture and attribute that UTM information. Once we've got that, you can see we've got some test campaigns here and we're then able to start to build out and report on the picture that we're seeing. So I've got some test data here. We can see the different campaigns that people are members of. We can see the different um, campaign source and mediums that are driving our interactions and driving our signups and engagements. Now, we can then use this information, and this is where it starts to become powerful, use this information to actually start to drive our follow-up marketing activity. We can see here on my test campaign one, I can see all the leads that have interacted with that, and I'm able to then market to them in the future. Thank you. And thank you so much, Rich. We really appreciate you sharing all of that automation and reporting that was set up to fully capture all of the engagement that was happening and the full impact on the camp, uh, on the campaign and on the pipeline. So now we have gone through Jean's journey. She has set up her campaign. And now it is time to vote. So how this works is uh, navigate over to the poll tab and go ahead and start voting for your favorite. And to just give you a recap, because I know we heard from a lot of amazing um, people today, a lot of amazing solutions. So Remember, Jane turned to Rollworks to set up her targeted ad campaign, and then she turned to Qualified in order to set up that AI conversational experience. Then she worked with Chili Piper in order to set up proper routing to make sure that Jane is um, turned over to the right person at the right time for a seamless experience. And then Jane turned to Storylane where she set up an interactive demo on her event page. Continuing on, she then uh, worked with Stencil in order to uh, streamline her email creation and collaboration process to create that personalized uh, communication experience to nurture registrants and get them excited for the event. Then she turned to Traction Complete to make sure that all of her CRM data would be uh, routed and correctly set up to accurately track everything and make sure that she has good data. Then she worked with SQL in order to actually set up the, um, the event and make sure that her attendees had a great interactive experience. And then she partnered with Zerkante to set up all of her reporting. Okay, all right. So I believe we have a winner. And with that, I'm going to close the poll. If I can get a drum roll for the people in the back. <laughs> and our winner is... qualified with 28.21%. Uh, Thank you so much, everyone, for voting. Congratulations to Jacob Engler and the rest of the qualified team. And um, you delivered an amazing demo, and clearly all of our attendees thought so too. And a Massive thank you to all of our demo drivers that joined us today. We greatly appreciate you sharing the powerful solutions and how to how they can be applied 
to this event campaign. All right. So with that, we wanted to leave you with a few just reminders and items before leaving today. A reminder that the Genius Bar is open all week. Again, that includes Friday, and this is your chance to get one-on-one -on -one expert support to uh, pick their brain and walk away with ideas and inspiration for your next campaign and your future initiatives. And remember how you can book a Genius Bar appointment is by clicking that Sponsors and Resources tab up in the navigation bar and entering the virtual booth of the Genius Bar and booking your appointment from there. And then again, be sure to join us for workshop day tomorrow if you're not already signed up. We have 13 amazing interactive workshops ready for you. Uh, you'll get a chance to learn from certified instructors, uh, advance your skills, get best practices in order to optimize your processes, be more efficient at what you do, and then also elevate your customer experiences and really drive growth at your company. And remember that that includes the recordings, lesson decks, and materials for all 13 of those workshops. So again, if you haven't already, be sure to sign up for that. And once more, thank you again to our incredible sponsors. Mardreamin would not be possible without you. All right, and it looks like you have a few minutes. Um, you have a few minutes uh, to take a break quickly. Grab a refill of your beverage. Grab a snack before the next session starts. We wanted to thank you all again for joining this morning's demo jam and be sure to check out today's afternoon keynote panel of blurring the lines, marketing sales and customer success. Enjoy the rest of your Mardreamin everyone. Thank you so much.